Good morning. Junior Church, you are dismissed. As you can see, it is Christmas season full. We are starting a new series this week or this month. Oh, there, there I'm coming through. And it is coming home for Christmas. Growing up when you were little, did you always just look forward to that time when you would go to someone's home for Christmas, whether it was your grandparents or, or maybe another family member. Uh, when we lived in Wyoming, we would travel all the way from the northeast corner of Wyoming down to the northeast corner of Colorado to go to Grandma and Grandpa Blake's home for Christmas. And I, I looked forward to it. And every year when it was Christmas, people prepare for it. So here's a question I want to ask you. How do you prepare for Christmas? Will you be prepared for all of that family time? How will you tell your parents, I'm not coming this year? How will you deal with that one obnoxious cousin or aunt or uncle or whoever it is? How will you handle the stress of that ever-increasing, growing to-do list? How will you keep from overspending on gifts? This season, we are coming home for Christmas. Coming home for Christmas with that nostalgic feeling. And I hope you kind of smelled that pine scent when you first came in. Some of you, I just noticed, where is it? Um, it's an artificial tree, so it's an artificial smell. Uh, but it, it should be lingering a little bit. But can you tell that, that smell of grandma's when you'd walk in and, and it had that Christmas smell and also that home cooking and how it mixed together. Those old decorations, my grandma had this big wooden, I don't know what it was called, but it had candles that would spin, make it spin, the heat would turn it, and it was just gorgeous, and I would just sit there and watch all the intricate parts spinning around. Those old decorations. When it's time for people to come home, and there's that longing, but there's a lot to prepare for coming home for Christmas. There is a lot to get ready for. People have been getting ready for Christmas since before October. There are a lot of things to do to have a successful Christmas season. We here at the church started planning Christmas Eve candlelight service in October. And a lot of people think, well, you can't start that till after Thanksgiving. If you want a good one, you do. You've got to plan ahead. I talked to many people who already started making travel plans for where they're going and what they're doing for the Christmas season. Some people already had their menus planned out for their Christmas meals. For our house, just a little insight, Casey has a to-do list. She does not know I wrote this. A to-do list to get the house ready. Everything from moving the furniture, vacuuming all the floors, sweeping and doing all that, then sorting the Christmas decorations before you can put them up to decide which ones go where and which ones we're going to use or not. Then you do the tree. Then you do the decorations. It's all in this. And because of all that preparing, and I think our house looks great. See, she prepared for it, and it happened. All of those prepare, uh, preparations, all those long to-do lists that just seem to keep getting longer and longer. And unfortunately, the hours in the day don't grow with the length of that to-do list. They stay the same. So how do we get all those preparations done by Christmas? How do we prepare for the family? How do we get ready to travel? Most of all, how do we do all of this and maintain the spirit of Christmas? Aren't you ready to just come home for the holidays? Remember that time when you were little and you could come home and you didn't have to worry about all that stuff. You could just come, relax, enjoy. That's what we want to do this year. People talk about getting into the Christmas season, but I, I was thinking, have you ever stopped to think who it is that talks about the spirit of Christmas? The only place I hear this phrase are either Hallmark, commercial, uh, Hallmark movies or ads on TV. They want you to get into the Christmas spirit, meaning come buy this stuff to make you Christmassy. 
That's what they're wanting. Even the greeting card companies de um, depict this warm, loving relationship that says this is the Christ uh, spirit of Christmas. And while some of those look very similar, they're very close, all they want is for you to buy their cards. They don't care if you have a good relationship with your family or bad because they have cards for both sides. They just want you to buy into it. Trying to get into this Christmas spirit can be very hard for people because of all the preparations. If you forget, how many of you remember that time that you were preparing for that first child? And how you went nuts trying to make sure everything was ready. Think back to the preparations you made for the wedding. I, I talk to many people when, when we're doing the premarital counseling and they hate it. Why didn't we just elope? Because of all the preparations. What about the first time you moved? You make all those preparations. It takes a lot of preparations to get ready for something. Mary had to get prepared for what was coming, for the child to be born. In fact, God had to make preparations for this child, this Christ child to be born. Not just Mary, but God made preparations. God had Caesar take a census, which would cause all the people to go back to their hometown where Mary and Joseph had to go to Bethlehem. Think about all the preparations they had to make for that journey. They had to pack that station wagon called a mule, and travel that long road. But that's not where their preparations begin. Mary and Joseph had to make preparations for this coming child. You know, he had to order the, the crib from Ikea and figure out how to understand all those parts. He had to baby-proof the house. But still, that's not where their preparations began. They had to get ready for their wedding. I mean, that was coming. The invites had already been set, the menu had been picked, and they're getting all these things ready, but that's still not where they started making preparations. Look in chapter 1 of Luke. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. I, just for a moment, if you want to know something, that's hilarious. Who is this guy and what kind of greeting is this? I mean, this is funny. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who has said to uh, be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Mary's reply, I love this. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left. Here's an, a lady who's ready to get married. And she finds out she's an unwed mother. She's just been told she's going to have a baby and there are a lot of preparations to be made now. She should be focused on this upcoming wedding and her dress and the feast and the family plans, but now she must plan for an unwanted pregnancy. And how? How is she going to tell her fiancé and especially say, he's not yours? There's a lot to prepare for. And this is the beginning of the Christmas spirit. So 
what is the Christmas spirit? You're going to hear a lot of it through this season. Well, the Christmas spirit is relationships. And I want us to understand this is the key part of it. In getting prepared for Christmas, we need to have the right Christmas spirit, and that means relationships. So to help us understand, I want you to say it with me. The spirit of Christmas is relationships. Are you ready? The spirit of Christmas is relationships. And the reason why I wanted you to say it is so that you not only heard it, but you thought it and maybe even felt it. We're going to look at the scriptures. And, and if you look at it with this idea of what getting prepared, Mary did something strange, but yet it's really not that uncommon. After the visit from the angels, she didn't just go to church. She didn't post about it on Facebook. What, what did she do? Luke tells us a few days later, she went to visit Elizabeth, her cousin, who lived in the hill country. See the next verse in verse 39. At that time, Mary got ready, prepared, and hurried to the town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. She'd just been told, Elizabeth, your cousin, who cannot have babies, is already six months pregnant. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit in a loud voice. Okay, this is not little children's church here. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Who told her that Mary was pregnant? The Holy Spirit. And because she was filled with that, and she shouted with joy in this, but why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord... Oh, whoa, whoa. She didn't just know Mary was pregnant. She knew that this child was... The Lord. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greetings reached my ear, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Whoa, what a greeting. What a way to say, Mary, guess what? It's all true. It's going to happen. Mary had a lot of things to worry about, to make preparations. And instead, she went to Elizabeth's home. Why would she go to Elizabeth's home? She needs to figure out what to do with Joseph. She needs to figure out what to do with this baby. She needs to figure out this home and her reputation and her family. And instead, she ran away? Or is it because the angel told her, Elizabeth, your cousin in her old age is pregnant? So go test the word of the Lord. And as you see she is pregnant, you will know that God is preparing you. She wanted somebody to experience, and maybe Elizabeth's the only one who would know because the angel, God spoke through the angel to say, this is going to happen. Notice what Mary did after this. If you start reading through this, so she gets there, there's this great introduction, and they're talking, and they're excited. And Mary sang a song. I, isn't that just typical? You go into your family, how are you doing? Oh, it's great to see you. Life isn't a musical. But yet, what did she do? Now, we lost the tune of this. But listen to the power of Mary's song. Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Now we're getting to the meat of this, okay? 
So all this time, Mary should be getting prepared for a wedding and then a baby, and she leaves for three months. When she should be getting prepared for those things, what does she do? She stops. She refocuses. The only way to keep from going crazy in the midst of all the preparations of Christmas, to prepare for Christmas, we need to keep our priorities in order. That's the first thing we learn here about this, that Mary got her priorities in order. And I know that's probably not what you wanted to hear. You wanted to hear something about joy and peace and love. and It's not going to happen. It's Christmas time. You're going to see your family. We all know what can happen. But since we are coming home, and I don't mean grandmas, I mean coming home with God, we are going to focus on what the real spirit of Christmas is, and that's relationship. Relationship with Him, and we need to have our priorities straight. Instead of focusing on the dinner, instead of focusing on the gifts or the decorations, because Mary didn't focus on the wedding or the preparations of the baby, she focused on getting closer to God. During her visit with Elizabeth, Mary took plenty of time to focus on her relationship with God. And if you don't believe that, look at the song she, we just read. Look at how she worshiped and extolled Him and how she lifted Him up. She focused on God. Luke records that Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months, which means she was probably there for the birth of John the Baptist. We don't know what Mary did during those three months, her home visit with Elizabeth. However, we do know that she had a remarkable relationship with God. Maybe it's a good thing the Holy Spirit didn't reveal to us what she did, because here's what I think would happen. If he had, we would try to replicate everything Mary did just to replicate the experience. You know, you know it's like people say, well, you've got to say the Lord's Prayer exactly like that, and that's the prayer. No. The prayer is focused on the relationship you have, and that's why and how you pray, not the exact words. It's not a magical incantation. It's about a relationship, just like Mary was saying. And so she focused on God. She got her priorities straight to prepare for His arrival and, and for preparing to come home for Christmas. We must get closer to God. That is part of it. That's why we want Christmas, right? But let, don't we lose it in all that hustle and bustle? The way to prepare for Christmas is to have the right spirit of Christmas, which is relationship with God. Before you can focus on your relationship with your friends or family, you have got to focus on your relationship with God. Before I can have the right Christmas attitude towards my wife or my kids, I have got to have the right attitude with and to my God. Because that will reflect to and through me to them. Mary could have spent those three months preparing for the birth of her son. She could have spent those months growing deeper in a relationship with Joseph, her parents, his parents, her friends. Instead, she put her priorities straight and she focused on getting closer with God. Now, in the beginning of the sermon, I asked you, how will you prepare for Christmas? Remember, I asked, how will you prepare for that family time or tell your mom I don't think we're going to make it. Or how are you going to deal with that cousin or that uncle? That growing to-do list. But maybe the question that we need to ask and answer is, this Christmas season, how will you focus on God? With all the decorations, how will they help you focus on God? During the family get-togethers and meals, how will you focus on God? Doesn't that just put the rest of it in comparison? Think back for a moment, and for some of you this is going to be a little hard, but think back to when you were young. Some of you just got the joke, because that was a long time ago for some of you. Had to say it because some didn't get it. 
Think about setting up the Christmas tree. How many of you remember the, the actual going out and picking the tree and cutting it down and dragging it, setting it up and then cleaning up all the needles? How many of you remember putting up all those decorations and, and when you'd grab that old ornament and go, oh, remember when I made that? Or remember when grandma made this or gave this to you? Remember when you turned the lights on and it was done and it just set a mood? Remember the excitement of seeing the gifts under the tree and that shiny paper? All of those things took preparation. All of those th things took time to set up so that you could enjoy them. And we too need to take time to fully be ready for Christmas. We need to get ready by making our priorities straight, by aligning ourselves with God. We need to make sure we are ready for Christmas by getting closer to God. What was it that Mary did once she focused on God? To prepare for Christmas, we must take time to worship. That's what she did. She worshiped God. She sang a song, and she didn't care who sang it because she was focused on getting closer with God because of her priorities, so she worshiped Him. Worshiping God helps us remember how holy He is, how He helps us. It helps us remember He is sovereign. Worshiping God aligns our mindsets to keep God as the focal point of our lives. When the wise men came in the spirit of Christmas because of a relationship, what did they do? They worshiped. The shepherds, as they left, once they had that started relationship with Christ, what did they do? They shouted praises and was telling everybody about Him, which is part of worship. When you come home for Christmas, make sure it is a time of worship to God with the family. If you want to get in the true spirit of Christmas, then you've got to make it about God. I hear this all the time, okay? I see pins, I see billboards, I'm keeping Christ in Christmas. I'm going to say Merry Christmas. You know what? If you're focusing on God, you don't have to fight or argue that. Christ is going to offend anybody who doesn't believe in Him. And if they say, well, I don't believe in Him, I'm sorry, but I'm still going to worship Him. Because I'm coming home to him. And instead of being the Scrooge Christian about it, I'm going to show you joy. I'm going to show you excitement. Because I've been preparing for him my entire life. And I can't wait to come home for Christmas. When you see a kid excited for Christmas, what does it do to you? When you see them all lit up because of the lights, when they're sharing about the gifts, and there's that big one in the back, you start getting joyful with them. Imagine if we did that to the rest of the world. Instead of arguing and fighting, we prepared for Christmas by focusing on Him and worshiping Him. which means letting the light of God in me shine so that it shoves the darkness away. Before you carve the turkey or the ham, carve out some time for God in your schedule during Christmas. That's what God did for you. Do you realize God prepared Christmas time for you. He took time to prepare for you. In the midst of running the universe, he stopped what he was doing so he could celebrate your birth. He smiled when you took your first step, when you said your first word, when you rode your bike. He kissed every scrape of your elbow and your knee. His eyes were misty when you prayed to him with faith in the first time. And when you told him you wanted his son to be your savior, I really believe God leapt out of the throne and said, yes, that's my child. He was excited because he prepared this whole way so that you could come home for Christmas to him. 
his eyes filled with tears and he ordered the cosmos to celebrate your redemption. He prepared the way. He made time in his schedule to focus on you. Will you do the same for him? Will you focus on God? The decorations are beautiful. But compared to my Jesus, they're trash. The memories and the family, man, I cherish them. But they're faded compared to the eternal blessing and the future I have with God. Are you prepared for Christmas? If not, will you change that today? Let's stand. We're going to sing a song of worship to focus our priorities. And will you sing it? Will you shout it? Because He is holy.